This is Chapter 62 of Sketches New and Old. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Sketches New and Old by Mark Twain, Chapter 62 A Curious Pleasure Excursion. Published at the time of the Comet Scare in the summer of 1874. We have received the following advertisement, but inasmuch as it concerns a matter of deep and general interest, we feel fully justified in inserting it in our reading columns. We are confident that our conduct in this regard needs only explanation, not apology. Editor, New York Herald. Advertisement. This is to inform the public that in connection with Mr. Barnum I have leased the comet for a term of years and I desire also to solicit the public patronage in favor of a beneficial enterprise which we have in view. We propose to fit up comfortable and even luxurious accommodations in the Comet for as many persons as will honor us with their patronage, and make an extended excursion among the heavenly bodies. We shall prepare one million staterooms in the tail of the Comet, with hot and cold water, gas, looking-glass, parachute, umbrella, etc., in each, and shall construct more if we meet with a sufficiently generous encouragement. We shall have billiard-rooms, card-rooms, music-rooms, bowling-alleys, and many spacious theatres and free libraries, and on the main deck we propose to have a driving-park, with upward of one hundred thousand miles of roadway in it. We shall publish daily newspapers also. Departure of the Comet the comet will leave New York at 10 p.m. on the 20th inst., and therefore it will be desirable that the passengers be on board by eight at the latest, to avoid confusion in getting under way. It is not known whether passports will be necessary or not, but it is deemed best that passengers provide them, and so guard against all contingencies. No dogs will be allowed on board. This rule has been made in deference to the existing state of feeling regarding these animals, and will be strictly adhered to. The safety of the passengers will in all ways be jealously looked to. A substantial iron railing will be put up all around the comet, and no one will be allowed to go to the edge and look over unless accompanied by either my partner or myself. The postal service will be of the completest character. Of course, the telegraph, and the telegraph only, will be employed. Consequently, friends occupying staterooms twenty million and even thirty million miles apart will be able to send a message and receive a reply inside of eleven days. Night messages will be half-rate. The whole of this vast postal system will be under the personal superintendence of Mr. Hale of Maine. Meals served at all hours meals served in staterooms charged extra. Hostility is not apprehended from any great planet, but we have thought it best to err on the safe side, and therefore have provided a proper number of mortars, siege-guns, and boarding-pikes. History shows that small, isolated communities, such as the people of remote islands, are prone to be hostile to strangers, and so the same may be the case with the inhabitants of stars of the tenth or twentieth magnitude. We shall in no case wantonly offend the people of any star, but shall treat all alike with urbanity and kindliness, never conducting ourselves toward an asteroid after a fashion which we could not venture to assume toward Jupiter or Saturn. I repeat that we shall not wantonly offend any star but at the same time we shall promptly resent any injury that may be done us, or any insolence offered us, by parties or governments residing in any star in the firmament. Although averse to the shedding of blood, we shall still hold this course rigidly and fearlessly, not only toward single stars, but toward constellations. We shall hope to leave a good impression of America behind us in every nation we visit, from Venus to Uranus and at all events, if we cannot inspire love, we shall at least compel respect for our country wherever we go. We shall take with us, free of charge, a great force of missionaries, and shed the true light upon all the celestial orbs which, physically aglow, are yet morally in darkness. Sunday schools will be established wherever practicable. Compulsory education will also be introduced. The comet will visit Mars first, and proceed to Mercury, Jupiter, 
Venus, and Saturn. Parties connected with the government of the District of Columbia, and with the former city government of New York, who may desire to inspect the rings, will be allowed time and every facility. Every star of prominent magnitude will be visited, and time allowed for excursions to points of interest inland. The Dog Star has been stricken from the program. Much time will be spent in the Great Bear, and indeed in every constellation of importance, so also with the Sun and Moon and the Milky Way, otherwise the Gulf Stream of the Skies. Clothing suitable for wear in the sun should be provided. Our program has been so arranged that we shall seldom go more than one hundred millions of miles at a time without stopping at some star. This will necessarily make the stoppages frequent and preserve the interest of the tourist. Baggage checked through to any point on the route. Parties desiring to make only a part of the proposed tour, and thus save expense, may stop over at any star they choose, and wait for the return voyage. After visiting all the most celebrated stars and constellations in our system, and personally inspecting the remotest sparks that even the most powerful telescope can now detect in the firmament, we shall proceed with good heart upon a stupendous voyage of discovery among the countless whirling worlds that make turmoil in the mighty wastes of space that stretch their solemn solitudes, their unimaginable vastness billions upon billions of miles away, beyond the farthest verge of telescopic vision, till by comparison the little sparkling vault we used to gaze at on earth shall seem like a remembered phosphorescent flash of spangles which some tropical voyager's prow stirred into life for a single instant, and which ten thousand miles of phosphorescent seas and tedious lapse of time had since diminished to an incident utterly trivial in his recollection. Children occupying seats at the first table will be charged full fare. First-class fare from the earth to Uranus, including visits to the sun and moon and all the principal planets on the route, will be charged at the low rate of two dollars for every fifty million miles of actual travel. A great reduction will be made where parties wish to make the round trip. This comet is new and in thorough repair and is now on her first voyage. She is confessedly the fastest on the line. She makes twenty million miles a day, with her present facilities, but with a picked American crew and good weather, we are confident we can get forty million out of her. Still, we shall never push her to a dangerous speed, and we shall rigidly prohibit racing with other comets. Passengers desiring to diverge at any point or return will be transferred to other comets. We make close connections at all principal points with all reliable lines. Safety can be depended upon. It is not to be denied that the heavens are infested with old ramshackle comets that have not been inspected or overhauled in ten thousand years, and which ought long ago to have been destroyed or turned into hail barges, but with these we have no connection whatever. Steerage passengers not allowed abaft the main hatch. Complimentary round-trip tickets have been tendered to General Butler, Mr. Shepard, Mr. Richardson, and other eminent gentlemen, whose public services have entitled them to the rest and relaxation of a voyage of this kind. Parties desiring to make the round-trip will have extra accommodation. The entire voyage will be completed, and the passengers landed in New York again on the 14th of December, 1991. This is at least forty years quicker than any other comet can do it in. Nearly all the back pay members contemplate making the round trip with us in case their constituents will allow them a holiday. Every harmless amusement will be allowed on board, but no pools permitted on the run of the comet, no gambling of any kind. All fixed stars will be respected by us, but such stars as seem to need fixing we shall fix. If it makes trouble, we shall be sorry, but firm. Mr. Kojia, having leased his comet to us, she will no longer be called by his name, but by my partners. N.B. Passengers, by paying double fare, will be entitled to a share in all the new stars, suns, moons, comets, meteors, and magazines of thunder and lightning we may discover. Patent medicine people will take notice that 
we carry bulletin boards and a paintbrush along for use in the constellations and are open to terms cremationists are reminded that we are going straight to some hot places and are open to terms to other parties our enterprise is a pleasure excursion but individually we mean business we shall fly our comet for all it is worth for further particulars or for freight or passage apply on board or to my partner but not to me since i do not take charge of the comet until she is under way it is necessary at a time like this that my mind should not be burdened with small business details mark twain end of chapter sixty two